Good evening, folks. Triple Crown here, coming to you from Vancouver, British Columbia. This is another Global War 1939 Round 6 Summary Playtest 4 of the Global War 1939 series. Sorry for the delay. Busy, busy week. Lots of, lots of bad stuff happened in Triple Crown and his personal life, so sorry for the delay. Um, but it is very nice when I can kick back and use my brain power to play some Global War 1939. And the Allies, or at least Russia, Moscow, is in trouble. So currently, sitting in Moscow is about, I think I counted 74 units and a fortification. And the, this is all the stuff that's surrounding Moscow. The Italians have taken Stalingrad and they are going to be able to very easily walk into, well, maybe not next turn, maybe they're to capture Stalingrad the next turn. So this is the stack of stuff that's sitting on the doorstep of Moscow and with everything included, including, uh, all these aircraft, they built a heavy bomber last turn, and then they've got a couple medium bombers and all their aircraft. It's they outnumber them by about 10 units. And whenever I've played this game and attacked a large force that has a fortification, uh, I found the magic number for success is about a bonus of 10 units. You have to have an additional 10 units as the attacker to hopefully guarantee your success. And that's still not guaranteed, believe it or not, especially when I'm rolling the dice. Um, because when you're attacking, you're attacking with infantry. And if you're lucky, you have some artillery and those units, do you just they just don't have the same punch uh, as the defending units do in a fortification when they're defending at a four. And the infantry, there's 10 that can de defend at a five in a fort. That is very tough. So the Italians thought they were actually well, haven't decided what they're going to do with their fleet yet. That's the last thing I, you know what, they're just going to move it. They're going to move it over here and save it. That's what they're going to do. So <laughs> the allies were clever last turn. Oh, sorry for the bouncing around. They moved <laughs> their entire Russian American and Canadian and British fleet that whatever could make it was this this naval blockade here um, in this sea zone. So that would mean the Italians would not be able to make their way to the west coast of Europe, um, which would have been a bit of a delay, but you know they still have their their fleet intact and maybe that's better for a different day. Now naval blockades, they currently block two ships, so these guys, they wouldn't have been able to get through even if they won the naval battle, which kind of defeats the purpose. Maybe they should have taken a poke at the Canadians and the and everybody else, but it would have been mutual destruction. Um, <laughs> anyways, thought I uh, thought I was super smart in doing it. And you know what? This might have still been a good play because it's delayed the allies from landing in Western Europe for at least another turn and maybe longer. The Germans have built up more in Western Europe. Now currently the allies or the British have bombed the major factory in Western Germany. They've got 17 damage on it and they built another, um, they had two medium bombers and they built another uh, heavy bomber last turn. So that is going to be the campaign for when the Allies come, is to make it expensive for the Germans to repair their factories. The Italians, because they're you know basically walking around Europe for free now, and they made 23 IPP last turn, and that's quite a bit considering they've lost some of their island territories, they've been totally punted out of Africa, as you can see, and they are getting squeezed out of South America. They've got three territories left in Chile, uh, Viedma, which is the capital of Argentina, and they've gone into Curibata, or uh, I'm not saying that right, but the Americans are putting the squeeze on, and you know, the Americans are eventually gonna be making a little bit more IPP because of this uh, endeavor for the Italians to annex Argentina, but the Allies, 
I think it's a losing. <laughs> They're still not coming out ahead because the Axis would trade probably 10 IPP for the rest of the game if it meant the Allies are going to be delayed landing in Western Europe uh, for at least another one or two turns. So that's a trade, at least now they're happy to make. Uh, the British fleet um, over here, that's currently sitting in C-Zone 42. Um, they did take Greece, they got kicked out of Greece, but they landed heavy into Turkey, and they or Istanbul and Turkey, so they're able to get a couple more aircraft and a, a, a bunch of stuff here. But what that's going to do is it's going to open the Black Sea. So the British can now come in and help out the Russians, but it's probably a turn late as the Germans are probably going to be steamrolling over Moscow next turn. And there's not a thing the Russians can do about it. Uh, over here in... Asia, the Japanese have just inched forward and inched forward, and now they've got the Chinese cornered in this northeast territory up here. They've got a couple British armor there, um, but they are probably all going to die next turn. <laughs> Unfortunately, well, as much as plastic can die, I'm going to put it back in the box. So, um, sorry for the bad humor, folks, but uh, there's still a couple. Um, Russian, actually, you know what? This guy would have backed up. Forgot that he could do that. He would have backed up over here, uh, at least for some cannon fodder. And he allow, allowed, allow me to make small corrections <laughs> when it's just me playing a solo play test. The British built a um, tactical bomber and the FEC also built a tactical bomber and they built another couple armor last turn so even though they lost this first territory in burma they are stocking up and perhaps ready to go into sing king next turn or hit the japanese back the japanese they've just, they're starting to build some fast movers now on the coast at their at their minor factories and getting geared up to go hard into russia they did take these two territories up here um so the soviet far east and this other territory here, those were all walk-ins. And they decided to take the Philippines now. Actually, this, these guys are all gone. Before the Americans keep plopping an infantry down there every single turn, which was a great uh, move by Captain G. I saw that in his game. A little bit of ping pong action at the sea zone. The Japanese sent a destroyer and the British and the, and the um, Australian sent in a Corvette and a destroyer and took out, uh, did not suffer a casualty. So the Japanese fleet now is a little bit spread out. Um, however, they are, I keep forgetting to destroy naval bases. So they're at a naval base. I'm tired, folks. I'm sorry for the, the bad humor and the weird laughter. Um, so the Japanese are probably going to take the rest of the money islands or at least get in a position to do that. And this uh, combined Canadian, Anzac, Australian, New Zealand, British fleet is just hiding here. I mean, it hasn't really done anything the whole game. They're going to have to get into the fight um, pretty soon. So the Japanese are starting to build a little bit more Navy now. They've still got the uh, naval blockades of the three American uh, convoy zones. Or not, not a blockade, but convoy zones you can see here. So... That is costing the Americans. And so I predict next turn, the British are going to do a landing somewhere in Russia to help out. Now, currently, the British cannot go into on Russian soil or the Allies cannot go on Russian soil until either Novosibirsk, Stalingrad, Leningrad, or Moscow are under Axis control. So we're trying to prevent the allied air force from coming in to help out russia early on so we'll see how that plays out and that's all i got folks and stay tuned for round seven